doubled thousands of dollars within my first week. I paid off my first Glowforge within the first month and a half. I recently got to talk to Sarah from Heap Design Co. And we talked all about her starting her newest business with her lasers. She has a Glowforge and also a Thunder Laser. And we talk about the process of moving from the Glowforge to the Thunder Laser as she grew her business. What's really great in this conversation is all of the things that she learned in her first business that she applied to starting her laser business. I can't wait for you guys to hear this conversation. It's a long one, but I think it's totally worth your time to watch the whole thing. There are timestamps in the description below. So if there's anything of particular interest that you want to know about, you can jump right there. Welcome, Sarah. So excited to talk to you today about your business. So let's start with who you are, what your business is, how long you've had it. I'm Sarah Heap, and I have uh, my business is Heap Design Co. I opened in November of 2020. So I mostly sell DIY craft kits and some engraved gifts and decor, but mostly focus on the DIY crafts for people. Did you have a business before you started this? I did. For about four years, I ran, I was called the Crafty Sheep because I'm Sarah Heap. I'm, yeah, anyway. So I did basically everything. Like I, I started with, you know, the cricket and all of that kind of stuff that was really big. Um, so I did t-shirts and vinyl decals and tumblers. And I got started in sandblasting. My mother-in-law used to sandblast. So she kind of taught me how to do it. And that was really when like the big Yeti craze happened, personalizing Yetis. And so it was huge. I ended up quitting my full-time job at that point. I was overwhelmed with sandblasting, personalizing tumblers. But then all the companies started doing it. So it was like Arctic and Yeti, they all started engraving them themselves. And I just lost my like edge in that business. So I decided to go back to work. And then I was like, I don't like being in the work <laughs> world. I, <laughs> I like being home. I like taking care of my family, and, you know, all the appointments and kids stuff. And so I was looking for what's next, you know, I have to make money and, you know, we're a two income family. So that's when the laser thing just kind of happened. <laughs> so had you already gone back to start to having your own business before you bought the laser? Or was that kind of the, the two things happened at the same time? They happened at the same time. And so I was leaving my job. I had already put in my two weeks. We kind of talked about like, what does this look like? I knew I couldn't go back into sandblasting because it just hadn't become as profitable as it was before with all of the like big brand names doing it too. I had a friend that owns a store locally here in St. Louis and she had a glow forge and I had seen some of the things she was making and I was like, I don't want to step on your toes, but like, like, what is this thing? And so she walked me through it all. I used her referral code and we were like, yes, this is what we're doing. And I knew from the very beginning that I wanted to focus on like DIY, like wood blanks and painting because I had looked I'd done a lot of research on like Etsy and saw that there really wasn't a big product line for that. There were a couple people doing it, but it just wasn't a big thing. And I was like, I love DIY. Like if I get to go to a class somewhere and paint a sign, I'm there. And it was in the middle of the pandemic. It was 2020 and everybody was home. So I was like, all right, let's get a craft party delivered to front doors. So that's what we did. We bought the laser. I set it up and that week I made, oh, what was the ornament? It was a year we stayed home ornament. I sold thousands of dollars within my first week. Crazy. And I was like, okay, like this is, this is what I'm doing now. How did you do that? Did you do that locally? Did I actually posted in one of the local Facebook like crafting pages where like everybody and their brother goes to like buy local made stuff. And that's where it really started. So I had posted in there. I said, 
you know, you can do PayPal or my website, but a lot of people went to Etsy and it was just like, boom, 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 boom. And my husband and I had actually gone on a getaway weekend. And so I had posted it on a Thursday and that whole weekend, my phone was like, cha-ching, 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 <laughs> app. And my husband was like, what the heck? <laughs> so, but it was awesome. And like, we got home on Sunday and I was like, okay, I really need to nail down this Glowforge thing because now I have hundreds of ornaments to make and I barely know how to use it. And then it just kept going from there. So it just was like, boom. Especially coming from the background that you come from, I think a lot of people starting with a Glowforge or a different laser are coming from the like, I want to make all the things. I don't want to decide. What tips do you have there? I mean, we started this when we thought, okay, like, let's look at what went wrong before. I did everything. Like, everything. I did decals. I did t-shirts. I did tumblers. At one point, we bought this, like, giant vinyl maker. It was like a cricket on steroids. And it was to be, you know, okay, let's make bigger decals. And then I started doing wood signs. We were framing, we were painting, we were, I mean, everything. I think that's where you really get lost and you really start blowing whatever budget you have made for yourself on what's the next thing. And I think rather than doing what's the next thing, you need to put your time and your energy into what do I want to do most? It's most important to me. What is my biggest money maker? Like if sales were slow, I was like, okay, I'm going to buy this next new product. Somebody's going to buy this and I'll make my money there. But it really just evolved what you have and what people like. So I think the biggest thing is nailing down what you really want to do and what you enjoy doing. I decided I really wanted to focus on like product photos and my website and Etsy. Because when you put your time into your photos and your listings, like the details and your wording, you draw people in. I wanted my photos to stand out. I wanted them to be very simple and like nothing in your face. When I first, very first started, I bought, it almost looked like uh, worn wood, like the photo backdrop. And then I started joining some of the Etsy little like webinars that they do and stuff. And I yeah. really focused on what they were saying. And they were talking about plain white backgrounds and different ways to focus your photography. So I went all white and it was just like, boom, boom, boom. Because when you don't have all those distractions, people are drawn to the actual product. It works. Like it literally works. So I focused on that. And I think that was maybe a big part of what like pulls you away from other people. Did um, you have a photography background? No. I used my phone and white backdrops. I did, I tried for a while. I used the photography lighting and then I found out it is better to use cloudy days and photo editing apps. That's it. And so, I mean, I have nothing fancy at all. My previous business, I bought, you know, the fancy like $800 camera and all of those kinds of things. And I really found that cloudy days of my phone take the best pictures. <laughs> and it's somewhere where people get really overwhelmed. There's so much to learn already. Maybe if that's one thing that they could take off there, I have to get all the right stuff and I have yeah, to learn it that yeah. way. Of course, you know, you can spend all that money and do that. But from my experience, you really don't need to. It's not necessary. So, And the photo backdrops I have, they're literally squares that are white. And that's it. It's easy. And nobody really knows. Pretty photos. And you're like, <laughs> I took them on my desk with my phone and it was cloudy. <laughs> You really knew going into this what your goals were. Did yeah. you have a profit goal first? Did you have a revenue goal? Did you have just like a, I just want to see what happens? It was really see what happens because I left my job before I really even got started with the laser. Like I had put in my two weeks and we just were waiting for my Glowforge to show up. You know, my goal, of course, was to make what I was making my salary from my office job, we knew that that was maybe not realistic. You know, when you're making 
a lot of money at your desk job and then you go home and you're like, oh, I'm going to work with a laser. You don't know. So it was really kind of wait and see. And I paid off my first Glowforge within the first month and a half. My husband and I were both kind of like, okay, maybe we like did a good thing here. So that Christmas, I only had the one Glowforge and I had um, three ornaments that I was just selling at rapid pace. And so I was getting up every two hours, just like a baby, and switching boards with my glow board. <laughs> literally every two hours because and I had we put up like a camera in the basement because I was freaking out you're not supposed to use it leave it unattended but like I had so many orders and so many ornaments to make that I didn't have a choice and so some nights I actually slept on the couch down here because I was that afraid to leave it unattended um but yeah like clockwork like an infant every two hours <laughs> i was switching my board and that went on for like three and a half weeks and we were like okay we need another one <laughs> <laughs> do that again. What you mentioned of starting your Etsy and your Shopify at the same time mm -hmm. is definitely something I recommend to people. You're going to have to build traffic over time, unless for some reason you just have a huge social media following or something right. else. Um, I, yeah, I did start my website right off the bat along with my Etsy. Um, with my previous business, I had a website through Shopify and I just knew I really wanted to do the website again. I, I just know like, you know, everybody complains about the fees with Etsy and all of that, but I, I knew how to make a website. And so I was like, okay, I just want to kind of throw it out there right at the beginning and hopefully draw that traffic. Yes. But yes. while you're building traffic, you can also learn what are your best sellers through Etsy potentially, right? You can leverage that. Yeah. And I think that's really important too, with having both your Etsy and your website at the same time. Because so in all of my Etsy orders, I have an insert that has my, it actually has a QR code for my Instagram. And then it has a QR code that takes people to um, my YouTube page where I have like um, DIY videos of like how to make and assemble your different craft kit. So people can like quickly go, but then my website's on there. And yeah. so it's like, Oh, Hey, she also has a website. And then a lot of people will then move to the website and you drive a lot of traffic there that way. Some people are just diehard Etsy. They yeah. just, no matter what, no matter how much you promote your page, they're going to go to Etsy and that's fine. Promoting your website, your you're doing good for your business when you draw traffic there. So tell me about the process of moving to the bigger laser. Well, it was just stinking time. <laughs> um, so we had the two glow forges um, and I loved them. I think they're an amazing way to get started like hard, like big time. If you're deciding on a laser, I think glow forge is amazing um startup your investment is slightly less than your larger lasers and there's such a big community of people that use them that you can use those people to help you walk through most glowforge users are like oh yeah do this and try mm -hmm. this and um just helpful but so we had two and i mean honestly i just couldn't keep up like the I feel like they're really good for startups. They're good for hobbyists. Um, but when you're really trying to um, grow a business and you want to be big, you're going to have to have three, four, or five of them. <laughs> so we went with the Thunder. I have the Nova 35. If I had more space, I would have gone with the 51. And how many watts is your laser? I upgraded to the 100. This one comes in the 80 and the 100. So we decided to just go big or go home. Um, and so, I mean, I'm getting the same amount done from having two glow forges to just the thunder in a third of the time. So yeah. I, 
for the first time in a year and a half, I'm ahead on orders. Like I had been right up to that shipping promise date um, or later. And then I was having to email people and say, I'm sorry, like it's going to be later than expected. So I'm finally ahead and it's like, I don't feel like I'm drowning. The process was probably about six months that we were like, okay, like we are going to have to do this. And so we researched Thunder, Boss, Omtec, um, Mira, you know, and it was just a lot, a lot of reading, a lot of trying to search reviews and we watched so oh my gosh so many youtube videos (laughs) (laughs) of people that were like this is what i have this is what i use it for it was a long process and my husband was very involved too because it's a very big investment and he wanted me back with the family too because all i was doing was switching boards all the time So, I mean, he was a really big part of that and he knew he was going to be my tech support and wanted to be able to use it and fix it if I needed. And we landed on Thunder. It's amazing. If someone's looking at a Glowforge, there's a lot of simplicity in just like you plug it in and it kind of works. You you need to think about air filtration, just kind of where's it going to go out, but you don't have to think about your cooling. You don't have to think about how you're positioning your laser and getting height and focus and those Mm -hmm. things. What are those other concerns that someone would need to know? Well, maybe I want to go straight to the thunder. What are Mm -hmm. those things that they need to understand are definitely more complex in doing something like that? The size. (laughs) It's huge. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. It doesn't fit on my desk anymore. It wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Their customer service is stellar, like out of this world. I think it really depends on what you're doing. There are a lot of ways that it can be extremely complex, but I think it's all about what you're making. The Thunder itself is this gigantic machine, but then next to it, you have your air chiller and then you have your compressor and then you have your fan. There's like 5,000 cords running out of it. (laughs) It's complex in that way that the hookup, the setting it up, like was so simple that we were actually really surprised. However, I'm not sure that it would have been simple if I hadn't started with a Glowforge. I think I would have been a lot more confused. Thunder and other laser brands use light burn so it's much different you know you're learning an entirely new program and i think that is probably more difficult and more complex than actually setting up there itself once you've done glowforge then you go into these other programs and you're like oh i just drag in the svg or i do this or you don't have a monthly fee like you would with the Glowforge Pro. So, I mean, that's nice, but your investment is certainly much bigger. Um, I think at this point for the one that we have, it's like two or three times the investment. So you really have to be committed that this is what you want to do. Yeah, it's not a hobbyist (laughs) machine in my opinion. I do feel like if I hadn't started with the Glowforge, I would be a lot more confused. So, Do you do your own designs? Yes and no. I purchase a lot from other Etsy sellers. I use um, Silhouette Business Edition. Lightburn, you can do a lot, like, but it's basically almost like having an Adobe Illustrator like for your laser. I'm s- still super new. I can put in text and shapes <laughs> and press go. I mean, there are a lot of people design within Lightburn, but I do, I buy, I do buy a lot of files. I don't love the designing aspect. I don't have that much patience, I don't think. Um, So I prefer buying pre-made files, but if someone wants a custom, I'll, I figure it out and I do it. It might take me a little longer, but (laughs) I think that's good for new business owners that you can compartmentalize the things that you enjoy. If let's say you want to make signs, if you enjoy the actual like painting and assembling and all of that, buy a file. If you enjoy the designing, design the file. So Lots of different ways to create kind of the ideal scenario for yourself. 
Yeah. And I hate painting. I really, really hate painting. I hate painting. So <laughs> I actually, I have a girl, she lives in Wisconsin and she paints for me. So when you see samples on my Instagram, Joe is my girl and she does that. I make a whole ton of samples and I ship them to her and she paints them all. She does my YouTube videos and ships them back. And it's awesome. <laughs> it's really awesome. Have you had any items that you thought were going to be really amazing that were just terrible? Oh yeah. Several actually. What were they? Like the mom puzzle piece sign. You hold us together and it had the puzzle pieces. I sold like two. And I was like, really? Maybe that was something that people preferred to buy already done. And I think that's one thing my husband actually said to me the other day. I think you're not planning far ahead enough. Like, I think that's a really important piece that maybe I'm not as great in that I thought I was. I probably should be making and listing Father's Day stuff in like March or April because then it starts circulating through right. the algorithms and Etsy and stuff. But so I think that's really important too because like I think I listed those puzzle things way too late. Yeah, and I had a couple ornaments that I made and thought like, oh, these are so cool. I made one that said, so the year we stay at home ornament was so big. I made one for last year that said the year we got vaccinated and it had like a needle, like a, and I was like, these are going to be huge. <laughs> Maybe sold like 10. And I was like, what the heck? I'm, you're going to have that. Not every idea is a great idea, unfortunately. I used to get kind of hurt by it. I'd be like, I spent so much time and energy and thought, and I was so excited. And then you get like cricket. You just have to know, like, not all of your ideas are great ideas to everybody. <laughs> have you found different than with your first business, because you focus on the DIY kits, that you're able to really just manage your supplies and that's been helpful in being oh, profitable my. because you're like, I'm doing Baltic birch or whatever you use in yeah. your kits. So you can mm -hmm. keep that in stock and then cut what you want. So my supplies are wood, like mask that I put on the wood to give it that smooth painting surface. I don't have to sand. You nice. just peel off the mask and you're done. And then like poly bags and boxes. So packaging supplies and wood. I do have some acrylic, but I really don't love working with it. I've tried. I've tried so hard. <laughs> I know people like make some really awesome stuff and I just can't. I don't know. I don't love it. I, and everybody tells me it stinks. I don't have a sense. It does of, smell really bad. <laughs> I don't have a sense of smell. I haven't smelled since I was like 15 years old. It's Fun fact about Sarah. <laughs> so like when I use acrylic, my husband and my daughter will come home and they're like, oh, it smells so bad in here. I don't love it, but so wood. And actually we buy and cut our own wood now. Um, I used to buy, which if you are a Glowforge user, the um, Columbia Forest project panels from Home Depot are where it's at. Um, FedEx hated me for a really long time because when things were good, I was ordering 15 boxes a week of the wood. You ship them in the rectangular rectangular boxes of 10 and so he would be bringing 15 boxes up our driveway that's like this I gave him a really big tip at Christmas and was really <laughs> happy about that so we buy the four by eight sheets of maple plywood from Lowe's now actually and we have a wood cutting day and cut them to size for the thunder and it's awesome because it's like oh we're running low time to go clothes and then I restock bags and that's a huge difference from my previous business buying t-shirts and vinyl and tumblers and whatever else, other glorious idea I thought I had that week. <laughs> I am trying to get a little more into some like gift things like engraved gifts but I'm I'm working really hard to just do like a couple at a time and not go crazy with buying and trying and just kind of see how it goes start small because I'll overwhelm myself and then I'll have all of this inventory that maybe isn't selling 
I don't want to do that. <laughs> what traditional advice did you follow that you wish you hadn't? I didn't really take much advice on this business. I, I really just went with what did and didn't work from my previous experience. I didn't seek a lot of advice with my first business really either. I think more of that, I focused really hard on trying to get big quickly rather than like an organic growth of like a little at a time. And I was more seeking advice previously of like, how do I get an LLC and how do I, it's really just like start small and just let it happen. Obviously with this one, I thought I was starting small by posting a stinking ornament and boom, but it was organic and I wasn't, I wasn't pushing the envelope. I wasn't pushing my finances. I wasn't anything. It just, it just happened. And I think slow is better if you can, because you can get really overwhelmed. You can get in a lot of debt and you can make a lot of mistakes. So the advice, I think I really kind of ignored. <laughs> I've always been like a, I'm going to do it my way and my way is the best way. <laughs> so I just kind of like ran with it. But I, I think that there's a lot of advice that you can take, especially with the Glowforge community. Like it was like, oh, I'm just going to figure it out. But like people that community is so helpful yeah um i i learned a lot from people within like the facebook groups not necessarily from glowforge themselves but people within the community that have the machines that have experienced the machines they're the best source of advice i think because they're living it with you i know that you're on Instagram. Is mm -hmm. that your primary social media and your primary marketing or do you do mm -hmm. TikTok? What else do you do? And how did you decide on Instagram? Instagram, I like. I I think I'm in that like, you know, you have that Facebook generation, you have the Instagram generation, you have the TikTok generation. My daughter is 17. She's the TikTok generation. <laughs> and so when I'm like, how do I do this? She will show me how to do it. Instagram, I like it's been best for me because I think that there are so many people on the platform that are maybe in the genre of what I'm trying to like hit and go. For. I do um, boost posts on there. Not a lot. I'll maybe do like a hundred dollars a month of just random boosting things, which does bring me some followers. It does bring me a lot of traffic to my website. Like if I don't have something boosted versus when I do have something boosted. Um, so I do think that it's a really good way to bring people in and maybe they're not buying, but they're seeing you. It's a good way if you have the budget, I think it's a good way to like get your name out there. And like when you bring in the followers from the boost, maybe you're not bringing in money, but you're bringing in somebody who's now watching you and they could potentially buy in the future. I do Etsy advertising. I, I think I'm under 200 a month in advertising in general. I'm just not, I don't know. It goes back and forth because sometimes I don't boost anything. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm so busy. I'm not advertising. So but yeah, Instagram's definitely my primary. I've actually taken a big step back from social media with the business in general. And maybe I'm going to hurt myself by doing that. But it's almost like this mental health thing of like, I can't spend all day. Who's following me? Who's liking? Who's commenting? I really had to be like, okay, if I don't go viral, it's not the end of the world. My right. current followers... They follow me, they interact with me, they tag me, they purchase. That's where you need to focus is like, who does follow you and interact with those people because they keep coming back. And I have so many repeat customers focus on who is following you rather than getting those other people to follow you. Those that like you are going to refer you and you're going to get customers that way rather than somebody sitting on their couch a thousand miles away that only looks at your post and never buys anything. 
for likes, not for comments. Like, it's not the kind of follower you want. What is your favorite thing to do day to day in your business? Put a board on my thunder and walk away. But for real, I do like putting it on there and just leaving it. And I mean, give it an hour and come back and I have four or five orders complete. I really do like interacting with the people on social media, on Instagram. Like, I feel like like you and other people have become like friends within um, the laser community. And like, I actually enjoy those conversations and I enjoy helping people. I've actually referred two people to Thunder and that they have bought since getting mine beginning of the year. I like helping other small business owners. It's, it's always been like people are seem like they are so competitive and there's mm-hmm. room for all of us. I think that's so important to like get out there, like help each other. Don't compete against each other because seriously, if everyone in the U S was buying their DIY kits from me, I would I'd be <laughs> overwhelmed. I mean, there's literally room for all of us, but I really do like those friendships that have happened within the laser community and that I know I can go on Instagram and see something positive. I know social media can be like, a, it's a trap. I don't know. I I think the laser community as a whole, it's, I love interacting with it. I love teaching people like what to do, what not to do. What's your that's... least favorite thing? Painting. So I try not to do it. There are some things that I do paint. Some days it's customer service. Like I mm. really have step away and not answer something right away because I think having good customer service is one of the top five things that makes a successful business. And my background's in customer service, working out in the world. Um, I worked for an online retailer for eight years prior to my previous business, and it was all phone, email, support. I really like bring that knowledge to my current business, but I have to step away. I'm going to be like, are you kidding me? (laughs) But providing that's really important. I also hate packaging orders. If I could just have my daughter do all of it for me, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to pay you. I'll do the stuff I like and you can package orders and answer people's questions. I mean, everybody has something, right? I hate listings. Oh. Oh, see, I could do my website and the Etsy side like all day. Oh, I do hate taking pictures. Like it's so like consuming and I have to like stand there and take it and then make sure I like it and then take another one and then edit all of them and then I could go without. How do you find inspiration? Since I buy a lot of pre-made files, I I follow those people. I have a couple shops that I really love buying from. They make excellent files. And so I follow them on social media. And anytime I see something that they've created, I'm like, oh, that's me. I try seeing what other businesses are posting and like what seems to be the thing right now. You know, that's changing regularly and being able to keep up with what the newest trend is within wood products is, it's a little overwhelming. Like it changes so regularly. Watching other people, and I think that the important thing is to get inspiration, but don't copy them. So kind of seeing what they're making and then just going off of that and thinking like, okay, they made this magnet and I like this concept and just going with the flow and kind of coming up with your own thing, which is difficult. And which is why I like buying files (laughs) because my mind, while I feel like I am creative, I don't work like that. You know, some people are like, Ooh, yes. And they just like go on and design it. And it's awesome where I'm like, oh, maybe somebody else made that file and I can go find it and buy it. (laughs) Just watching other makers kind of seeing what they're doing. A lot of the makers I follow make the products themselves. So they'll buy the file from the same person, but they paint it and do it where then I'm like, ooh, people really like that. So I'll buy the file and I make it as DIY. You can buy from the people that are pre-made or if you're the person that likes to make it yourself, now you have the option to make it. And it fits different budgets too, because buying a already made product 
is usually double to triple the price of buying it and making it yourself. So I think I'm just hitting a different niche there of people who, which is a big review I get a lot is with the DIY, I can afford this where you have somebody else who maybe can afford and enjoys buying it pre-made. So I go a lot off of what people like that's already made and turn it into a paint it yourself. What's your best advice for new Glowforge owners who really want to start a profitable business? Join Glowforge communities um, like Facebook. That's a big one because you can learn so much from people in there. You can ask questions and people will answer right away. Most people are very nice. (laughs) Another one would be like start small in the aspect of like try a few products at first until you're really comfortable with your Glowforge because you can get overwhelmed very easily if you're not starting on a small scale. You know, I started with one ornament and I made thousands of them and then Christmas was over and I could I knew what I was doing with the machine then and like got into so many more things the other would be research supplies if you are wanting to be profitable you have to spend less on your materials I don't know if the Glowforge materials are profitable for them as a business or not but there are so many people who cut boards to size for you if you're not if that's not your thing there's so many acrylic companies out there where you can buy the sheets that already fit your glowforge the support of the glowforge community start small and research your supplies because that's going to put you in the profit the less you spend and focus on your listings if you're going to list them like Put as much information in there as you can. You'll get fewer questions. People will know what they're buying. Yeah, your listing is like key because when you're selling online, that's your storefront. That's your like, you have to imagine walking into a store like, what do you want to know about this product? You know, how big is it? What color is it? What kind of wood is it made out of? Or acrylic or tell your story. (laughs) Like, you know, I sometimes I'm like, I need to describe this to a blind man. Like, I mean, really. (laughs) That's really smart. Yeah. Because they're not, they can't hold it. And that's the same with your photos, like showing every angle of the product. And sometimes it seems so silly because you're taking a picture of like, the side of it but that's how they can tell the depth every but your listing is talks for your product so that's if you want people to buy it like and it avoids having to do customer service so where can people find you um instagram gone totally simple across all platforms keep design co is all that you find instagram facebook my website is keepdesignco.com just put it in as one word and I'll pop up everywhere (laughs) all of Sarah's links are below in the description so you can find her and follow her business journey as well